Thank you, Dr. Uh, Jones and Olasky, for inviting me to uh, talk about ultrasonic energy devices. Um, these are a little bit safer than the electricity, so we're going to switch gears and talk about the what I refer to as a rapid massage of tissues rather than uh, uh, current. Um, I have no disclosures. I would like to put a disclaimer up that I've used many images of commercially available ultrasonic devices, and I do not, um, as a, in the FUSE course, we do not endorse a use of uh, one device or any company. Um, so just FYI for the images that are coming up. So um, what is ultrasonic energy? As I refer to it as basically a rapid massage or a vibration, and um, it's the energy transported through a material such as CO2 or air um, during that vibration and motion, and that causes uh, disturbance or uh, vibration of the material. N less than 20 hertz or less than 20 vibrations per second, that's subsonic, uh, subsonic energy and it can be felt from 20 to about 20,000 hertz, that's sound that most of us can hear. And over 20,000, um, that's in the range of ultrasound, as you can see in the graph above or in the picture above. Um, now, when you refer to the imaging ultrasound devices, the diagnostic tools such as the fast ultrasound or your gallbladder ultrasound, that's in the range of two to um, Eight, um, 18 million hertz, so that's up in the million range. The ultrasonic devices that we use for uh, surgery fall in between 20 to about 50 to 60,000 um, vibrations per second. So why do we use ultrasonic energy? It is um, somewhat safer. The, there's no elect electrical circuit that are needed. There's no need for a dispersive electrode. Um, there are very little risk of stray electrical injury from any current passing, although there is still current passing from um, it, if the device is connected by a cord um, from the generator. Uh, there's usually no electrical interference to monitors of any kind. Um, however, the main thing with ultrasonic devices that I want you to take away is that there is um, there is a risk of thermal injury or thermal spread. Um, the tip of the device is where the motion or the, the vibration is mostly concentrated and that gets very, very hot um, and can cause collateral damage. So how does it work? So basically we have, um, you can see on the picture that there is a, um, there are two jaws. The one straight jaw that sticks out of the sh shaft of the instrument is the vibrating jaw, and it oscillates um, very rapidly. You can't really see it with the naked eye, um, but that, that is what causes the, um, the uh, mechanical disruption of the tissue, especially when, it's, uh, when the tissue is compressed with the uh, top jaw, with the coaptive jaw that compresses the tissue in between um, the two layers. Now, how does the cutting or the um, operating occur? Well, there are two mechanisms. Mainly, the friction between the two jaws causes heat, which coagulates the blood vessel, the blood vessel or tissue, and there's also mechanical disruption that occurs. There's also a phenomenon called um, cavitation, which is basically micro bubbles that form within tissues that form little cavities that uh, vaporize or um, liquefy tissue and cause what we see with ultrasonic energy as uh, spray. Um, so those are the, the two main mechanisms of action. So in terms of the graphical um, representation of how um, the elect electrical current gets transferred into mechanical energy, um, as you can see, there is a controller box that is connected, or a battery source that is available in some instruments, um, that is connected to an alternating current. This alternating current then goes into the handpiece that has um, uh, piezoelectric disks, which are a, a little round disks that contract and expand and um, cause vibration in response to the current. Um, this is converted to 
mechanical energy that travels down the shaft of the instrument. So the energy that's transmitted inside the patient is mechanical energy only, and there's no electricity within the patient. The generator here you can see sends an electrical signal. Um, so first of all, you, you have a current coming in from the wall of 120 volts or 60 hertz, 60 um, cycles per second, that goes into a generator box that transforms this vibrational um, energy to a higher voltage and um, a much more rapid vibration of 23 to about 50 or higher um, hertz. Then this, in effect, um, is connected to piezoelectric elements within the handle of the ultrasonic device. And if you took the plastic off of um, the handle, you would see that inside you have these black round disks stacked one on top of the other with copper wires in between. And they respond to the electrical energy by expanding and contracting very rapidly. And this energy, this vibrational energy from these disks contracting and expanding, gets um, concentrated in this funnel type um, device that gets transmitted uh, down the shaft of the instrument to the tip, to that active blade, which is the blade that sticks out straight from the shaft of the instrument that, uh, that vibrates back and forth. These vibrations are very small. Um, undetectable, as you can imagine, 0 0.08 to 0 0.2 millimeters, and they occur very rapidly at 20 to 50 hertz. So in effect, the transducer converts the electrical signal into an ultrasonic stationary wave. So how do we actually um, uh, use this device to produce the effect that we want? So we, we want to know when we use the um, max or min setting. So basically, there are usually two settings on the ultrasonic device. And it's essentially um, like controlling the volume or the amplitude of the vibrations that we're producing. So uh, when you use the max setting, a higher amplitude wave is produced. Um, and the vibrations are... Um, basically higher in magnitude, and this produces a much quicker cutting action. And at the same time, you gain speed, but you can get more bleeding because there's less time for that thermal coagulation to occur at the max setting. Now, with the min setting, and this is sort of counterintuitive a little bit, but you get actually slower um, time of, um, that allows for that thermal energy and coagulation to occur, and you actually get more sealing or coagulation of the blood vessels, um, and, um, and, and uh, a, a better seal, but there's also an increased time to produce thermal sp spread and collateral damage from the min setting. So for tissues that are not super well vascularized, you're cutting through something that doesn't have a lot of blood vessels, you can use the max setting, and the min setting is used for uh, bigger vessels. Now, in terms of the technique, there's also a, an element of technique which will speed up the cutting uh, that, that occurs with the ultrasonic device. So you can... Um, squeeze the blade, some of the devices will allow you to um, have more squeeze with the, uh, with the actual handle, however, some devices have a limit on how much you can squeeze, but this may help you with um, increasing the speed of the cutting. Also, if you can imagine the blood vessels draw, as drawn in there, um, if you have that active blade that's oscillating and you push that blade up against the blood vessel and squeeze at the same time, you will have increased cutting with the ultrasonic device um, and less coagulation. So for smaller, again, for smaller vessels, less vas vascularized tissue, you, you may speed up your dissection by pushing that active vibrating blade 
against the tissue. So how does the ultrasound seal vessels? It's actually quite similar to um, the electrical energy. The vessel walls uh, will be compressed together. The, the jaws of the instrument must be closed for this to occur. The protein in the vessel wall will denature and form the sticky coagulum. And the vessel walls will adhere together um, after the energy source is removed. It usually does not stick to the instrument um, as with using an electrical energy sources. This is um, some data that I got from the Covidian preclinical comparative testing between their new device and another ultrasonic device. And it's just to demonstrate that there is heat production of more than 200 degrees Celsius in between the jaws. You have the mean peak active blade temperature that reaches over 200, 260 degrees Celsius. And then the blade actually takes some time to cool down to 60 degrees Celsius. Um, the, the mean thermal spread is anywhere between one to three millimeters in uh, dissecting with the ultrasonic devices. Um, but interestingly also to note that the seal time, the amount of time that you actually have to hold the instrument on the tissue in order to achieve good coagulation is approximately eight seconds. Um, this demonstrates the lateral spread. You have to be very cognizant of the fact when, whenever you're using the high energy of the, um, the even though mechanical energy, there is heat uh, produced at the very tip. Um, and when you're using this instrument, you will have thermal spread of one to three millimeters beyond where you're actually using your instrument. And when you open your blade, this blade remains hot. So when you're moving it around in the patient, um, it, it remains um, at a high temperature and you can cause damage to other tissues. This is um, in contrast to the ligature or the bipolar devices, which cool down pretty quickly. So what is the size of the blood vessels that you can um, co coagulate or dissect? Um, there's some evidence that most blood vessels up to five millimeters can be dissected or coagulated with ultrasonic energy, although some instruments are available now for larger vessels, such as seven millimeter vessels. Um, and um, basically with the bipolar energy that you use, you can achieve um, sealing of a much uh, or comparable um, size vessels, but keep in mind that most ultrasonic energy devices will not seal uh, blood vessels that are more than five millimeters in diameter. Um, this is just another um, example. This is a, an ultrasonic energy device that is designed to seal the seven millimeter blood vessels. And you can see that um, the, um, um, it, it just, compares the uh, burst, burst uh, pressure that is required after the vessel is sealed with um, one device versus another. So you can actually seal higher than five millimeters um, diameter blood vessels with ultrasonic devices. So just to summarize some take home, point, uh, some take -home points, um, there are some ad advantages and disadvantages to the ultrasonic devices. Basically the advantages are that they are versatile. There is no electricity in the patient. It's mostly mechanical, rapid massage as I call it, within the patient. And that's what uh, causes the, um, the, the heat, the coagulation, and the um, cav cavitation of the um, tissues. There's no dispersive electrode that's required. The vessels that can be sealed are five to seven millimeters. There's minimal spread of energy. However, there is still thermal spread that you have to um, take into consideration. There is very little char and no smoke, although there's spray of the um, tissues. 
And um, the disadvantages, the, the um, ultrasonic energy does create the spray. There is heat retained in the shaft of the instrument. The vascular sealing affected, is affected by your technique and the setting that you use. Um, this is not as good of a sealing larger vessels as some advanced bipolar devices that you may come across, and it can be more expensive than your regular um, bovi that you use in the operating room. Thank you very much.